Today, we are diving into the pages of a forgotten gem from the late 70s and early 80s, a magazine that brought a unique blend of dystopian vision, speculative fiction, and stunning artwork to the forefront. On this occasion, we explore the intriguing world of 1984 magazine, from its influence, which spanned the old continent, its thought-provoking stories, and the talented writers and artists who contributed, 1984 carved its own niche in the science fiction landscape during a unique era. So buckle up as we journey back to a time where future was uncertain and creativity knew no bounds. If you are a fan of dystopian tales, obscure comics, or just love a good trip down memory lane, you are in for a treat. Nineteen eighty-four was a monthly comic magazine specializing in fantasy and science fiction. The first issue was released in June nineteen seventy-eight in the United States and Spain. In America, was published by Warren Publishing, and months later was published by Totain Editor in the Iberian country. The creation of this magazine was partly a response to the success of heavy metal. The name is obviously inspired by the novel by George Orwell, although before choosing that name were shuffled many authors such as Yesterday, Today or Tomorrow. This magazine was part of a wave of science fiction and fantasy magazines that gained popularity during the 70s. The magazine was known for its anthology format, featuring a variety of short stories, serialized comic strips, and other illustrated content. The stories often explored dystopian and speculative themes. In 1980, the American version of the magazine was renamed 1994, since the use of the original name had caused some problems with George Orwell's heirs. The American version of 1984 magazine, 1994 in that moment, stopped being published in February 1983 because Warren went bankrupt. On the other hand, the Spanish version was renamed Son 84 to avoid an anachronism in the title. Although at the beginning both versions of the magazine shared practically the same content, quickly they became distinct from each other, acquiring their own personality and diversity of content. The Spanish version was discontinued in 1992 due to a lack of interest from the public, which at that time had other more innovative products available, such as manga or superheroes comics. The 1984 magazine featured contributions from various talented artists and writers who play a crucial role in shaping its content. While the magazine had a relatively short run, it left an impact with its distinctive blend of science fiction stories and compelling visuals. Richard Corbin Corbin's art is often prized for its intricate detailing, vivid colors, and ability to convey a sense of atmosphere and emotion. His involvement in 1984 magazine alone helped define the visual and narrative style of the publication during its run in the late 70s and early 80s. Abel Laxamana Laxamana was part of the wave of Filipino artists who made their U.S. debut in the 70s. Between 1978 and 1982, his art appeared in the horror and adult fantasy magazines published by Warren Publishing, such as Eerie, Creepy, Vampirella, 1984 and 1994. Frank Thorne He was particularly famous for his work on characters like Red Sonja, and his involvement in fantasy and science fiction genres. Frank's contribution to 1984 magazine was in line with his signature style, which often featured detailed and dynamic artwork. Rudy Nerves Rodolfo D. Nerves is a Filipino comics artist who has worked mostly as an inker in the American comic book industry, known for his lush, detailed ink line. From 1980 to 1983, he drew a story from Warren Publishing's Creepy, Eerie, Vampirella, and 1984. 
Víctor de la Fuente. He was a Spanish comic book artist who contributed to 1984 magazine with his unique artistic style. De la Fuente was known for his versatility in various genres, including, of course, science fiction and fantasy, making him a suitable fit for the speculative themes explored in 1984. Luis Bermejo Bermejo was a Spanish cartoonist and illustrator with a prolific career. In the 70s, through the Selecciones Ilustradas Agency, he worked on several Warren publishing magazines, including 1984. Bill to Bay He was an American comic editor, writer, and artist. People also knew him by the name Will Richardson and Dupe. His notable works include editing and uh, writing for Warren's horror comics magazines such as Creepy, Eerie, Vampirella, and 1984. Ricardo Barreiro was a widely recognized Argentine comic book writer who contributed to the 1984 with his stories War Tree and Black Star together with the great artist, also Argentine, Juan Jiménez. Jan Sternat He is known for his numerous collaboration with artist Richard Corbin on the story Mutant World and has also writing for DC Comics, Marvel Comics, Dark Horse, Clipset Comics, and Fantagraphics books. Carlos Trillo He collaborated with numerous artists such as Alberto Breccia, Enrique Breccia, Horacio Altuna, Juan Jiménez, among many others. In 1982, in the Spanish version of 1984, he published his story, El Último Recreo. Antonio Segura He was a prominent Spanish comic writer, creator of numerous series and characters. In 1984 magazine, he appeared with his series, Cracking, together with artist Jordi Bernet. These are just a few of the many people who contributed to bringing this publication to fruition. Like other Warren magazines such as Eerie and Vampirella, or magazines such as 2000 AD, 1984 featured recurring characters and series such as Mutant World Mutant World is a story about a world after a big disaster. Richard Corbin made the picture and Jan Sternat wrote the words starting from the third part of the series. The story is about Demento, a mutant who is innocent, cute and not very clever. Demento is one of the few survivors on Earth after the big disaster. He has to figure out how to stay alive in the world that is not friendly with other mutants who eat people and dangerous creatures all around. Gita of Elisar. Frank Thorne drew Red Sonja for Marvel Comics. Later, he made his own barbarian hero for the seventh issue of 1984 in 1979. Now we have the rules of the comics code. He had more freedom. His main character is a warrior who used to be a prostitute. She's bold and different from what people were used to in those days. Excerpts from the Delphic Encyclopedia. Miguel Angel Prado made up a story about the future of humans. It's told in 12 separate parts. Before each part, there are notes about time and history. These notes come from an encyclopedia writing in the far-off future. These dolphins may be from one of today's species. They look like bottlenose dolphins. This way of telling the story is like what Isaac Asimov did in his foundation's stories. The legacy of 1984 magazine lies in its brief but impactful contribution to the landscape of science fiction comics. Despite a relatively short run, the magazine managed to carve out a niche with its anthology-style format and a roster of talented artists and writers. The magazine's exploration of mature and thought-provoking themes set it apart in the late 70s and early 80s. Despite its challenges, 1984 magazine is remembered fondly by fans and collectors for its artistic contribution, thematic exploration, 
and its place within the broader context of science fiction comic history. Its legacy lives on through the individual works of the artists and writers involved who gave a diverse and dynamic content during that fascinating era. <laughs>